Vyasatitha c. 1539, also called Vyasaraja or Chandrikacharya, was a Madhva scholar and poet belonging to the Devata order of Vedanta. As the patron saint of the Vijayanagara Empire, Vyasatitha was at the forefront of a golden age in Devata which saw new developments in dialectical thought, growth of the Haridasa literature under bards like Purandara Dasa and Kanaka Dasa and an amplified spread of Devata across the subcontinent. Three of his polemically themed doxographical works Nyayamruta, Tatpaya Chandrika and Taka Tandava collectively called Vyasatraya documented and critiqued an encyclopedic range of sub-philosophies in Advaita, Visistadvaita, Mahayana Buddhism, Mimamsa and Nyaya, revealing internal contradictions and fallacies. His Nyayamruta caused a significant stir in the Advaita community across the country requiring a rebuttal by Madhusudana Saraswati through his text, Advaitajadi. Born into a Brahmin family as Yataraja, Brahmanya Titha, the pontiff of the Matha at Abur, assumed guardianship over him and oversaw his education. He studied the six orthodox schools of Hinduism at Kanchi and subsequently, the philosophy of Devata under Sripadaraja at Mulbigal, eventually succeeding him as the pontiff. He served as a spiritual advisor to Saluva Nursimha Deva Raya at Chandragiri though his most notable association was with the Tullava king Krishna Deva Raya. With the royal patronage of the latter, Vyasatitha undertook a massive expansion of Devata into the scholarly circles, through his polemical tracts as well as into the lives of the laymen through devotional songs and poems. In this regard, he penned several kirtanas under the nom de plume of Krishna including the classical Carnatic song Krishna Nibagan Bararo. Politically, Vyasatitha was responsible for the development of irrigation systems in villages such as Betakonda and establishment of several Vayu temples in the newly conquered regions between Bengaluru and Mysore in order to quell any rebellion and facilitate their integration into the empire. For his contribution to the Devata school of thought, he, along with Madhva and Jayatitha, are considered to be the three great saints of Devata Munitraya. Scholar Surendranath Dasgupta notes. The logical skill and depth of acute dialectical thinking shown by Vyasatitha stands almost unrivaled in the whole field of Indian thought. Topic: Historical sources. Information about Vyasatitha is derived from his biography by the poet Somanatha Kavi called Vyasyogicharita and inscriptional evidence. Songs of Purandara Dasa and traditional stories yield important insights too. Though Vyasyogicharita is a hagiography, unlike other works in the genre, it is free of embellishments such as performance of miracles and some of its claims can be corroborated with inscriptional evidence. Somanatha mentions at the end of the text that the biography was approved by Vyasatitha himself, implying the contemporary nature of the work. While some scholars attest the veracity of the text to the claim that Somanatha was a smartha hence free of sectarian bias, others question the claim citing a lack of evidence. Context The philosophy of Devata or Tattvavada was an obscure movement within Vedanta in medieval India. Philosophically, its tenets stood in direct opposition to Advaita in that its progenitor, Madhva, postulated that the self Atman and God Brahman are distinct and that the world is real. As Advaita was the prevailing subsect of Vedanta at the time, the works of Madhva and his followers came under significant attack and ridicule. Madhva deployed his disciples to promulgate the philosophy across the country, which led to the establishment of a small and diffuse network of mathas, or centers of worship, across the subcontinent. The early years of Devata were spent spreading its basic tenets including participating in debates with the Advaita scholars, philosophical improvements were pioneered by Padmanabhatitha and subsequently perfected by Jayatitha. Dasgupta contends that the latter's contributions brought Devata up to the standards of intellectual sophistication set by Advaita and Visistadvaita. By imbuing the nascent philosophy with structure and expanding upon Madhva's terse texts, he reinforced the intellectual position of Madhva and set the standard for Devata literature through his seminal work, Nyaya Sudha Nectar of Logic. Subsequent authors such as Vishnudasacharya further expanded upon these texts and authored commentaries branching into diverse fields such as Mimamsa and Navyanyaya, a tradition which would continue for centuries. Despite the intellectual growth, due to the turbulent political atmosphere of India at the time, penetration of Devata into the cultural collective of the subcontinent was limited. It was not until Sripadaraja, the pontiff of the Matha at Abur, who aligned himself with the Vijayanagara king Saluva Nursimha Deva Raya and served as his guru, that Devata would receive royal encouragement and a certain degree of power. 
But the Smartha Brahmins, adhering to the principles of Advaita, and Sravishnavites, following the Visistadvaita philosophy of Ramanuja, controlled the Shiva and Vishnu temples respectively, thus limiting the influence of Dvaita. <laughs> Early life Vyasatitha was born Yataraja to Balana and Akama in a hamlet called Banna. According to Vyasayogicharita, the childless couple approached St. Brahmanya Titha, who granted them a boon of three children with the condition that the second child, who would turn out to be Yataraja, be handed over to him. After Yataraja's Upanayana, Brahmanya Titha assumed guardianship over the child. Brahmanya was genuinely surprised at the precocious intellect of the child and intended to ordain him as a monk. Yataraja, anticipating the ordination, decided to run away from the hermitage. While resting under a tree, he had a vision of Vishnu, who urged Yataraja to return, which he did. He was subsequently ordained as Vyasatitha. Indologist B. N. K. Sharma contends that Vyasatitha would have been 16 years of age at this time, after the death of Brahmanya Titha during the famine of 1475–1476, Vyasatitha succeeded him as the pontiff of the Matha at Abba and proceeded to Kanchi, which was the centre for sastric learning in South India at the time, to educate himself on the six orthodox schools of thought, which are, Vedanta, Samya, Nyaya, Mimamsa, Vaisheshika and Yoga. Sharma conjectures that the education Vyasatitha received in Kanchi helped him to become erudite in the intricacies and subtleties of Advaita, Visistadvaita, Navyanyaya and other schools of thought. After completing his education at Kanchi, Vyasatitha headed to Mulbagal to study the philosophy of Dvaita under Sripadaraja, whom he would consider his guru, for a period of five to six years. He was subsequently sent to the Vijayanagara court of Saluva Nursimha Deva Raya at the behest of Sripadaraja. At Chandragiri Vyasatitha was received by Saluva Nursimha at Chandragiri. Somanatha speaks of several debates and discussions in which Vyasatitha emerged triumphant over the leading scholars of the day. He also talks about Vyasatitha giving spiritual guidance to the king. Around the same time, Vyasatitha was entrusted with the worship of the Venkateshwara idol at Tirupati and undertook his first South Indian tour, a tour entailing travelling to different regions in order to spread the doctrines of Dvaita. After the death of Saluva Nursimha, Vyasatitha remained at Chandragiri in the court of Nursimha Raya II until Tulava Narasa Nayaka declared himself to be the de facto ruler of Vijayanagara. At the behest of Narasa, Vyasatitha moved to Hampi and would remain there for the rest of his life. After the death of Narasa, his son Varanasimha Raya was subsequently crowned. Some scholars argue against the claim that Vyasatitha acted as a spiritual advisor to Saluva Nursimha, Nursimha II and Veera Nursimha due to the lack of inscriptional evidence. <laughs> At Hampi At Hampi, the new capital of the empire, Vyasatitha was appointed as the guardian saint of the state." After a period of prolonged disputations and debates with scholars led by Basava Bhatta, an emissary from the kingdom of Kalinga. His association with the royalty continued after Varanasimha Raya overthrew Nursimha Raya II to become the emperor. Fernau Nunes observes that, "...the king of Bisnagar, every day, hears the teachings of a learned Brahmin who never married nor ever touched a woman," which Sharma conjectures is Vyasatitha. Sharma also contends that it was around this time that Vyasatitha had begun his work on Tatpaya Chandrika, Nyayamruta and Tarkatanva. After the accession of Krishnadeva Raya, Vyasatitha, who the king regarded as his Kaladavata, greatly expanded his influence by serving as an emissary and diplomat to the neighboring kingdoms while simultaneously disseminating the philosophy of Dvaita into the subcontinent. His close relationship to Krishnadeva Raya is corroborated by inscriptions on the Vitala temple at Hampi and accounts by the Portuguese traveller Domingo Pais. Vyasatitha was also sent on diplomatic missions to the Bijapur Sultan and accepted grants of villages in newly conquered territories for the establishment of Mathas. Stoker conjectures that this was advantageous to both the king and Vyasatitha as the establishments of Mathas in these newly conquered regions led to political stability and also furthered the reach of Devata. Somanatha writes of an incident where Krishnadeva Raya was sent a work of criticism against Dvaita by an Advaita scholar in Kalinga as a challenge. After Vyasatitha retaliated accordingly, Krishnadeva Raya awarded Vyasatitha with a Ratnabhisheka a shower of jewels which Vyasatitha subsequently distributed among the poor. 
The inscriptions speak of grants of villages to Vyasatitha from Krishnadeva Raya around this period, including Betakonda, where he developed large irrigation systems including a lake called Vyasasamudra. This period of Vyasatitha also saw the establishment of Dasakuta translated as community of devotees, a forum where people gathered and sung hymns and devotional songs. The forum attracted a number of wandering bards called Haridasas or devotees of Vishnu such as Purandara Dasa and Kanaka Dasa. <laughs> Later years There was a period of temporary estrangement from the royalty due to internal political friction, during which Vyasatitha retreated to Betakonda. After the death of Krishnadeva Raya, Vyasatitha continued to advise Akuta Deva Raya. Inscriptions speak of his donation of a Nursimha idol to the Vitala temple at Hampi indicating he was still an active figure. His disciples Vijayendra Titha and Vadaraja Titha furthered his legacy by penning polemical works and spreading the philosophy of Devata into the Chola and the Malnad region, eventually assuming pontifical seats at Kumbakonam and Soda, respectively. He died in 1539 and his mortal remains are enshrined in Nava Brindavana, near Hampi. He was succeeded by his disciple, Srinivasa Titha. Works <laughs> 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 Vyasatitha authored eight works consisting of polemical tracts, commentaries on the works of Madhva and a few hymns. Visnudasikarya's Vadaratnavali, a polemical treatise against the tenets of Advaita, is considered to have significant influenced him. By tracing a detailed, sophisticated and historically sensitive evolution of systems of thought such as Advaita, Vyakarana, Nyaya and Mimamsa and revealing internal inconsistencies, McRae contends that Vyasatitha created a new form of doxography. Ramanuja's Visistadvaita as well Nagarjuna's Madhyamaka is dealt with in Nyayamruta. This style of polemics influenced Apaya Dikshita, who authored his own doxographical work titled Satrasiddhantalasasamgraha. Nyayamruta Nyayamruta is a polemical and expositional work in four chapters. Advaita assumes that the world and its multiplicity is the result of the interaction between Maya sometimes also characterized as a vidya or ignorance and the Brahman. Therefore, according to Advaita, the world is nothing more than an illusory construct. The definition of this falsity of the world called Mithyatva varies within Advaita with some opining that the world has various degrees of reality for example Apaya Dikshita assumes three degrees, while Madhusudana Saraswati assumes two. The first chapter of Nyayamruta refutes these definitions of reality. In the second chapter, Vyasatitha examines role of pramanas in Devata and Advaita. Pramana translates to proof or means of knowing. Devata assumes the validity of three pramanas: pratiksha, direct experience; anumana, inference; and sabda, agama. Here, Vyasatitha argues that the principles of Devata can be supported by the relevant pramanas and demonstrates this by verifying Madhva's doctrine of five-fold difference accordingly. Subsequently, the Advaita concept of Nirguna Brahman is argued against. While the third deals with the critique of the Advaita view on the attainment of true knowledge Jnana, the fourth argues against soteriological issues in Advaita like moksha, specifically dealing with the concept of Jivan Mukti enlightenment while alive. Vyasatitha asks whether for an Advaitin, the body ceases to exist after the veil of illusion has been lifted and the unity with the Brahman has been attained. Nyayamruta caused a furor in the Advaita community resulting in a series of scholarly debates over centuries. Madhusudana Saraswati, a scholar from Varanasi, composed a line-by-line -line refutation of Nyayamruta titled Advaitajadi. In response, Ramacharya rebutted with Nyayamruta Tarangini and Anandabhattaraka with Nyayamruta Kantakodara. The former criticized by Brahmananda Saraswati in his commentary on Advaitajadi, Guru Chandrika. Vanamali Mishra composed a refutation of the Brahmananda Saraswati's work and the controversy eventually died down. Stoker conjectures that the strong responses Vyasatitha received were due to the waning power of Advaita in the Vijayanagara Empire, coupled by the fact that as an administrator of the Mathas, Vyasatitha enjoyed royal patronage. Vyasatitha's disciple Vijayendra Titha has authored a commentary on the Nyayamruta called Lagu Amoda. Tatpaya Chandrika 
Tatpaya Chandrika or Chandrika is a commentary on Tattva Prakashika by Jayatitha, which in turn is a commentary on Madhva's Brahma Sutra Bhashya which is a Bhashya or a commentary on Badarayana's Brahma Sutra. It not only documents and analyzes the commentaries of Shankara, Madhva and Ramanuja on the Brahma Sutra but also their respective sub-commentaries. The goal of Vyasatitha here is to prove the supremacy of Madhva's Brahma Sutra Bhashya by showing it to be in harmony with the original source, more so than the other commentaries. The doxographical style of Vyasatitha is evident in his copious quotations from the main commentaries of Advaita and Visistadvaita and their respective sub-commentaries under every Adhikana or chapter. Only the first two chapters of the Brahma Sutra are covered. The rest was completed by Raghunatha Titha in the 18th century. Tarkatandava Tarkatandava or the Dance of Logic", is a polemical tract targeted towards the Nyaya school. Though Vyasatitha and his predecessors borrowed the technical language, logical tools and terminologies from the Nyaya school of thought and there is much in common between the two schools, there were significant differences especially with regards to epistemology. Jayatitha's Nyaya Sutta and Pramana Padati were the first reactions against the Nyaya school. The advent of Navyanyaya widened the differences between the two schools especially related to the acquisition of knowledge or pramanas, triggering a systematic response from Vyasatitha through Tarkatandava. Vyasatitha refers to and critiques standard as well as contemporary works of Nyaya, Ganjisha Upadhyaya's Tattvachintamani, Nyayalilavati by Sravalabha and Udayana's Kusumanjali and their commentaries. The work is divided into three chapters corresponding to the three pramanas, and a number of topics are raised, including a controversial claim arguing for the supremacy of the conclusion as opposed to the opening statement of the Brahma Sutra. Purva Mimamsa and Advaita adhere to the theory that the opening statement trumps the conclusion and base their assumptions accordingly. Vyasatitha's claim put him at odds with the Vedanta community with Apaya Dikshita being his most vocal opponent. Vyasatitha's claim was defended by Vijayendra Titha in Upasamhara Vijaya. <inaudible> Mandara Manjari Mandara Manjari is the collective name given to Vyasatitha's glosses on three Mayavada Kandana, Upadi Kandana, Prapancha Mithyavada Kandana out of Madhva's ten refutation treatises called Dasha Prakana and one on Tattvavivika of Jayatitha. Vyasatitha here expands only on the obscure passages in the source text. Topic: <inaudible> Bedoyivana. Bedoyivana is the last work of Vyasatitha as it quotes from his previous works. The main focus of this treatise is to emphasize the doctrine of difference beda in Dvaita as is evident from the title which can be translated to resuscitation of beda. Sama notes Within a short compass, he has covered the ground of the entire monistic literature pushed into contemporary prominence and argued an unexpurgated case for the realism of Madhva. <laughs> Legacy Vyasatitha is considered to be one of the foremost philosophers of Dvaita thought, along with Jayatitha and Madhva, for his philosophical and dialectical thought, his role in spreading the school of Dvaita across the subcontinent and his support to the Haridasa movement. Sharma writes, We find in his works a profoundly wide knowledge of ancient and contemporary systems of thought and an astonishingly brilliant intellect coupled with rare clarity and incisiveness of thought and expression. His role as an advisor and guide to the Vijayanagara emperors, especially Krishna Devaraya, has been notable as well. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Spread of Dvaita. Sharma credits Vyasatitha of converting Dvaita from an obscure movement to a fully realized school of thought of philosophical and dialectical merit. Through his involvement in various diplomatic missions in the North Karnataka region and his pilgrimages across South India, he disseminated the precepts of Dvaita across the subcontinent. By giving patronage to the wandering bards or Haridasas, he oversaw the percolation of the philosophy into the vernacular and as a result into the lives of the lay people. He also contributed to the spread of Dvaita by establishing several Vayu idols across Karnataka. Vyasatitha is also considered a major influence on the then burgeoning Chaitanya movement in modern day Bengal. Stoker postulates that his polemics against the rival schools of thought also had the effect of securing royal patronage towards Devata. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Scholarly influence. Vyasatitha was significantly influenced by his predecessors such as Vishnudasacharya, Jayatitha and Madhva in that he borrowed from their style and method of inquiry. He exerted considerable influence on his successors. Vadaraja's Yuktimalika derives some of its arguments from Nyayamruta, while subsequent philosophers like Vijayendra Titha and Raghavendra have authored several commentaries on the works of Vyasatitha. Vijayadwaya Titha's Padaratnavali, an exhaustive commentary on the Madhva's Bhagavata Tatpaya Nirnaya, borrows some its aspects from Vyasatitha's oeuvre. His influence outside the Dvaita community is found in the works of Apaya, who adopted his doxographical style in some of his works and in the works of Jiva Goswami. In his dialectics, Vyasatitha incorporated elements from such diverse schools as Purva Mimamsa, Vyakarana, and Navyanyaya. His criticism of Advaita and Nyaya led to a severe scholarly controversy, generating a series of exchanges between these schools of thought, and led to reformulations of the philosophical definitions of the respective schools. Bagki notes, "...it must be recognized that Vyasatitha's definition of reasoning and his exposition of its nature and service really register a high watermark in the logical speculations of India and they ought to be accepted as a distinct improvement upon the theories of Nyaya Vaishika school." Topic. Contributions to the Haridasa cult The contribution of Vyasatitha to the Haridasa cult is twofold. He established a forum of interactions for these bards called Dasakuta and he himself penned several hymns in the vernacular language Kannada under the pen name Krishna, most notable of those being the classical Carnatic song Krishna Nibagan Bararo. Vyasatitha was also the initiator of social change within the Dvaita order by inducting wandering bards into the mainstream Dvaita movement regardless of caste or creed. This is evident in his initiation of Kanaka Dasa, who was not a Brahmin and Purandara Dasa who was a merchant. <laughs> Political influence The political influence of Vyasatitha came into view after the discovery of Vasyayogicharita. The court of Vijayanagara was selective in its patronage thereby creating competition between the sectarian groups. Stoker contends that Vyasatitha, cognizant of the power of Smartha and the Srivaishnava Brahmins in the court, targeted them through his polemical works. Though his works targeted the philosophy of Ramanuja, Vyasatitha maintained a cordial relationship towards the Srivishnavites, often donating land and money to their temples. In his role as a diplomat, he interacted with a variety of people, including tribal leaders, foreign dignitaries, and emissaries from the North India. By establishing mathas and shrines across the subcontinent, patronizing large scale irrigation projects at strategic locations, and forging productive relationships across various social groups, he not only furthered the reach of Vishnavism but smoothed the integration of newly conquered or rebellious territories into the empire. In doing so, he exported the Madhva iconography, doctrines, and rituals into the Telugu and Tamil speaking regions of the empire. The establishment of Madhva Mathas, apart from serving as a place of worship and community, led to fostering of economic connections as they also served centers of trade and redistribution of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>